Hey everyone and welcome back to The Grim Reader. Today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite books of 2021 part one and these are books from I mean I do it in order I think about it in order. These are the books in positions 21 through 11 and then the next video will be in my actual top 10 and so so on the bad, the bad news side, but it's not really such a big deal, is that I didn't make my goal of 52 books. I'm probably, I might finish one more, but it, it won't enter into these charts, I don't think. And that'll bring my t total only up to 39. It'd be nice if I could get it to 40, but you know what? Because of, as you'll see at some point, you'll see why being a slow reader and having a tendency to, to fall into big books just slows me down, but it's what I like to read, so we're just going to go with it. And, you know, almost 40 books is fine, considering some of them were quite long, as you'll see. And I don't distinguish between ebooks, book books, and listening, although I'll tell you which ones, the, the mediums in which I kind of read these or got, got these into my head, because I do think it does make a difference sometimes, you know, in terms of the narrator or something that can help a book or and in a couple of cases I did a bit of both so I'll tell you so coming in in at not even in the top 20 so the honorable mention place position of 21 is uh, Stephen Erickson's second volume of the Males on Empire books these very very long epic fantasy novels and I listened to it and it's called Dead House Gates and it was apparently published in England first in the year 2000 and a few years later in America and I have fun memories of listening to it. It was It's very moving when you listen to it, but please don't ask me to do a synopsis of the plot because his plots do tend to be quite difficult to to re, you know, retell. There's a lot going on. It's not always clear. He does interesting things with the space-time continuum. <laughs> and his character, his characterizations of people are very good. And the second one I really like is there's an interesting female character who's very strong and very interesting. Um, the more I think about it, the more enjoyable it was. Um, and it still, it still is only there at that position. And I'm gonna be inserting lots of pictures here because this is one that I listened to, so I don't have a copy of it. And um, and I didn't go on with the series because of just wanting to do other things. But I have a feeling I will go back to it. The, they're very long books. These these are books that are, if you listen to them. You know, we're, we're talking about 35 hours, so they're a commitment in that sense. But in a way, the listening, I don't really care if it's very long. I just kind of fall into these long books and just go with the flow. But with this book, I do, I do think I'm losing a lot of it. I'm, I'm, I am just sort of skimming the surface a little bit, even though I did listen to the whole thing. And um, if someone tells me the plot, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, that happened and that happened and then this happened. And then, you know, stuff will come up later on. But... Yeah, it's an interesting, ambitious world that he has developed there. So let me know your thoughts on Steven Erickson. So moving into the top 20, I have a nonfiction book, me, <laughs> who hates nonfiction usually. And this is one that I had ditched, but then came back to and decided it was actually quite interesting. And part of the reason why I didn't like it is the, the narrator who was trying to sort of, I mean, so it's the book about the Mitford sisters, the six the six, the lives of the Mitford sisters, and apologies for not remembering who wrote it. Um, let's see if I have it here. Uh, Laura Thompson from the year 2016. And so I listened to this one. And so the Mitfords, you know, are these throwbacks to a different era, very posh, but but also not that rich. I mean, they, they were a funny family, eccentric, eccentric upper class English family with these six daughters who go, go on widely divergent political paths. And it's a really interesting autobiography about all these, uh, not autobiography, a biography about all these six women. And um, I keep thinking about them all, especially the, you know, the there's the one Unity who became very right wing. And was she the one that fell in love with Hitler basically? And then I think someone hurt her. She She got shot and then she was sort of, almost an invalid for a long time but then she passed away yeah I think that was unity and apparently she was born in swastika Canada <laughs> talk about fate and then there's other ones Jessica the more there's always the left wing one and she kind of had a very interesting life she came to America and did all kinds of things in America 
And of course the writer is Nancy Mitford, whose works I do want to get into at some point. Just a really interesting snapshot of a certain time period, you know, that will never come back, that's for sure. So that was number 20, and that was a book that I listened to, so you'll see a picture here of, the, of them all. <laughs> Moving on into another book that I listened to and really enjoyed, and kind of could put higher. Uh, it was quite enjoyable. In terms of enjoyment, it may even be a little bit higher than some of the other ones, but it's, it's fine to be at 19. It's called The Fortnight in September, this book by R.C. Sheriff, who is most well known for a play he wrote about First World War, um, people coming back from the First World War, I think. And this was published first in 1931. And the way I, I listened to this too, so you'll see a picture. Uh, my husband, Bill, had said that he had heard that uh, Kazuo Ishiguro had mentioned this book in, on an NPR interview as one of his favorites, or, or you know, a, a, a favorite book, that a recommendation. And so it, it was fairly short. And it focuses really sort of a minute, detailed depiction of a lower class, lower middle class family in England and their sort of very kind of petit bourgeois ways of planning. And the father's sort of an interesting, he's he's definitely the patriarch, but he's also kind of endearing. And it just goes through their holiday and in great detail what they do, how they get ready, the kids, how they have to go and negotiate putting giving the pet to, to the bird the bird to a neighbor and the, in the and making sure that the neighbor puts out food for the cat as anyone knows with pet, pets going away or holidays become difficult because you have to arrange for pet care and it's a sort of very very minute uh, and and it does have sort of passages of stream of consciousness where you go into the minds of the people and you you kind of hear more about the past and, and how they felt about things. It sort of goes back and forth between external and internal. Very enjoyable read, um, but not higher than 19. I think 19 is good for that one. So that's place 19. Coming into 18, so, you know, on the list, but I didn't enjoy it completely because it's just a bit of a hard sell, the fact that she's so young and she has this kind of very erotic strange affair with the older man and so yeah that's and this is somewhat uh, autobiographical it is well written i did like the style uh just still, still have a little bit of an issue with the whole older man young young woman thing the whole that whole thing although she kind of does a good job of um not portraying herself as someone who was being taken advantage of i don't remember it that well to be honest it's, it's been a while but a short, interesting, sad, good read that maybe I should read it again or come back to something else by Dura. Not a fan of movie tie and book book versions. I'd, I'd rather have a different one. But And I don't think I want to see the movie because the whole, I saw the trailer and like, oh gosh, the, the woman looks really, really young, I think. And so, yeah, that that's that's the issue with me with that one. But it's still, it's uh, um, number 18 for this one. Number 17, you'll get another picture here. I read this very early on in the year, and it's the first in the Murderbot science fiction series by Martha Wells from 2017, All Systems Read. Actually, this is an ebook. I didn't listen to it, I, I read it as an ebook, so I'll put it in the picture. And um, I really liked it, and I'm kind of like this with series, I often sort of hold back and we'll come back to the, to the other ones later on at some point. I wonder if it'd be good to listen to them, because they might be fun to listen to. But I actually did really like the murder, Murderbot. She was quite endearing as a character. Um, funny how we, how it doesn't matter if it's a robot or a person, because it's, you know, it's fiction, so <laughs> who cares? Um, anyway, yeah, no, so that's that was very enjoyable, and I would like to come back to All Systems Red, to the Murderbot series. Coming in at 16, and I will insert a picture, although I probably have a copy of this on my bookshelf, but I listened to this kind of on a whim because it was there in, the, in their Audible library. Canary Row comes in at place position 16 from, of course, John Steinbeck. Very memorable, um, but I wasn't sort of overwhelmed with how great it was. But it is very well written, very sad, kind of funny, sad, interesting, eccentric people who live on this street and sort of focuses on a group of men who don't seem to work much and who all seem to, you know, like drinking uh, and they all kind of live in this shack. And also the main character, Doc, who apparently was a close 
based on a close friend of Steinbeck's, a real a real person. So it's almost like an homage to these these characters that he's written. And it's an interesting sort of like with the the main character, one of the main characters, this doc this doc, the scientist scientist person who has He's very sort of generous towards other people, but but the, he, but there's a sort of darkness in him. He doesn't sort of, we don't see him really connecting. He doesn't have a family. He doesn't seem to have anyone sort of a sustained relationship with anyone. Uh, but he's very sort of, he has good relationships with everyone. And there are some really interesting, memorable scenes. I remember one scene when he goes to, to collect something in the waters and he sees something in the water and it's just really interesting how it's, and also how uh, I remember that scene because it's connected to him traveling and and it's sort of like, it's still always external. You don't really get into his head much except through the narrator. The narrator is sort of holding cl the reins quite cl uh, close to showing us what he might be thinking, but we don't really get into his head that much. And maybe that's a reason why it only comes in at 16 because I'm someone, the more and more, I'm, I'm getting more and more interested in internalized focusing on consciousness which sounds vague and boring but it's kind of what I'm interested in right now I mean not always but uh with that one I could I, I sort of left was left wondering well, what did what do we know of the internal goings on of these people but maybe that's just how Steinbeck, Steinbeck does things it's just his thing now we're coming into a group of books that could, I, you know, because just the, they were sort of eked out of the top 10 because there's so many good books in the top 10, but they're really good. Like, like all of these ones coming up could have been higher were it not for the top 10. So I guess that's always the way. Coming in at number 15 is Stephen King's really long book that I read as an ebook part, part of the way and then switched to listening to it to make it go quicker because it's quite long and that is The Stand from 1990. I read, I listened and read the uncut, the very long version, over a thousand pages long. Very engrossing, very plot driven. You kind of want to keep, keep, keep listening to it. The characterizations were, you know, fairly straightforward and not very complex, but complex enough to to keep you want, make you want to keep reading. But I think, at least in the stand area, I understood it, it's sort of a plot thing. And sort of the beginning chapters are very interesting because it's all about a pandemic that's killing everyone. I mean, much more than our actual pandemic. <laughs> but that that first part is all very interesting and shocking how what, and why do some people survive and most people don't and, and how people realize that this is happening and it all happens very quickly. Um, that was pretty good. And then the rest of it was good too, but then it does sort of go back to a long, a couple of years ago, I did listen to the whole Dark Tower series by King and it all comes back to good and evil in a very basic black and white type of way. There's a, there's a baddie and a goodie and they do good out and the goodie sort of kind of wins, I guess. I think in most, I mean, the ones I remember, um, it's funny how, but there's so much to get to that point and then it hones in on the baddie and the goodie. Which is sort of like, sure. <laughs> I don't know. It's a it's a little simplistic, but still worth worth listening to. And it was good fun. You know, it, it's engrossing, so I would recommend it, especially as a listen or or a read. You know, a lis listening to it was quite good. It was quite well read. And um, coming in at number fourteen, this is definitely one that could be higher if it were not for the other books. Is Louise Erdrich's *The Roundhouse*, which I listened to. I had a copy of it, but I did listen to it instead. And very enjoyable and very memorable. Some scenes are very memorable, kind of like a crime story, but connected to uh, um, indigenous the way indigenous people kind of are not taken seriously by by U.S law you know it's about uh, the, one of the main characters is a lawyer I think and how kind of does research into how this happens and how um the the how the law law on the on the reservation and then off the reservation and the relationship between the two are kind of interesting and there's sort of loopholes and gaps and things like that but the characterization was really well done and for most of the way it was a young person's point of view but looking back kind of the person wasn't young when they were telling the story but they were kind of like honing into their consciousness at that time and at that time they were a young teenager I guess 13 14 I don't quite know 
and wonderful scenes of his friendships with the other young people. That was actually really, really, really well done when they go on these outings and um, the writing was strong and I really did like it quite a lot. And I have one other Erdrich on my bookshelf and I do want to come back to her at some point. So that was number 14. Number 13 I have, and this is definitely one that will be higher if it were not for all the other good books. And this is my Trollope that I read this year, The Small House of Arlington. Arlington? Arlington! Sorry, I would say Arlington. It's Arlington, two L's. And I'm trying to, I always, I'm trying to sort of see, well, where do, do I put it in the Barsetshire Chronicles? Which, uh, except for the Warden, were all really, really good, in my opinion. And so, um, you know, it's it's up there with Barchester Towers, Dr. Thorne, Friendly. Maybe I like Dr. Thorne still the most. I don't know. But I really like Friendly Parsonage. And I really like this one. And I really like Barchester Towers. So they're all kind of the same, except for the Warden, which was a little bit boring, in my opinion. So I just have one more Barsetshire to go. And I will slowly make my way over into the Palace of Novels next. I do like Trollope. He's, I'm just glad that he was so prolific and that we have a lot of novels by him to read. <laughs> and were it not for the other books, he might be higher. He was initially in the top 10, but he got eked out by all the other ones. That brings me to number 12. So getting close to the top 10. This is definitely one that could have been higher, but and that's Marilyn Robinson's Housekeeping. I was not as overwhelmed with how great it was as, as for example, Gilead or my favorite Lila. Um, and I haven't, or oh, Home I didn't like as much. Um, I probably like this more than Home even. The one about the, uh, see, that's why I don't want to read Jack because I don't really like Jack. <laughs> also, I've heard that it's not that great, but I'll, one day I'll read it. I mean, I have it on my shelf, but I'm glad I did read this one, which is actually really interesting. More female focused, more female centric than, than the other two, other than the Gilead trilogy. Definitely more female centric. It's all women and specifically uh, kind of women who are who live outside the norm this one woman who takes care of the kids sort of but she's very strange and she's she's kind of almost emotionally connected to not wanting to live in a home to wanting to be um the, what i call the hobo lifestyle that she can she's so committed she's so it's ingrained in her to be a nomad to wander to not have a home and she kind of like so she, the way her, her child rearing is very strange because of this innate inability to really settle down, and and it's interesting. What I, one thing I remember most is how the strange relationship she has to the house, housekeeping, which is what it's called, and keeping house, and how she can't really do it, or she does it in a strange way. So yeah, I mean, it's in a way maybe it should be higher. I don't know, but it's for me for this year at least. It's at number twelve. And then last but not least for this video, I'll put a picture here, Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin from 1956. I really, really liked it. I have fond memories of reading it. It was a short read. It was an e-book e e read. And I really liked the style. Really liked the main character um, telling us about Giovanni, the American narrator, who I guess may be a bit of a stand-in for James Baldwin. I'm not quite sure about that. But, um, well, maybe not. No, he's supposed to be like more like I think he was not supposed to be African-American I'm not sure but really interesting depiction of this relationship of Giovanni of how they kind of navigate Paris at this time and I really enjoyed it so that's my top is that how many books is that one yeah it's about 10 or 11 books and then the next video will be my top 10 stay tuned hope everyone had a great great uh, Christmas today is boxing day except it's not about that it's the other kind of boxing it's giving the charitable boxing that's what I always thought in Australia because like, no one told me that it's, it's about different kind of boxes and in Germany it's just called the second Christmas day because yeah it, it's always a, it's always a holiday the 26th and it's just called second Christmas so happy second Christmas to everyone on the 26th and I will see you very soon comment on any of these books that you've read or uh, about your reading for this year <clears throat> I'd love to hear from you all <clears throat> Excuse me. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.